Well, hi, um, hi again to some of you who were just here for the scrapbooking video, but this time I'm not actually scrapbooking. Um, I'm going to unbox the November kit and take you through uh, what's in there, what I'm thinking, what my whole strategy will be for November. And you can either purchase a kit if you want to get pieces that are exactly like mine, or you can build this from your stash. Because the whole idea of why it's called Best of Both Worlds is that I put out a list of what I'm going to use, and I use all of those supplies live for two, or live, I use them in two live videos every week for the month. So, and then you can see all of the pages that I make in real time um, with those exact supplies. However, there's not a subscription, you're not locked into anything. The whole idea is I give you the list. If you wanna shop from that list, great, thank you, because it's an affiliate link and that really makes these videos possible and I thank you for that lots. Um, but if you have a local store, please shop at your local store because they are gems now. And well, they always were, but they're extra special these days. And if you have a bunch of stash and you wanna use stuff that's that you've already bought, then I'm totally here for that too. So if you want to use this video to have a look at what I'm picking and what I'm thinking with it, and then go to your stash and pick similar things, I am totally here for that because if you've got stash, might as well use it. I'd much rather it be in your albums than getting dusty in a drawer. Cool? So that's a big, quick summary of Best of Both Worlds. I'm gonna break into what I'm using this November and in the description box below, you can find the link that's live to shop right now. And once we hit um, December, and, or once we hit November and that kit updates to December, there's also a link in the box that will then take you to like a little archive reference list of everything that's in this one. Um, anything else I need to say? I do need to say that, hi, my name's Chevelle. I teach online scrapbooking classes, design scrapbooking products, and help you use them to tell your stories in a creative way. It's not just my hobby, it is my job, and that means anytime I scrapbook on the internet, it's considered advertising, and legally I have to make sure you're aware of that. So thank you for coming to watch my hashtag advertising. I always appreciate you being here, and if you ever have a question, please let me know. You can leave comments in the live chat or later in the replay chat, which eventually gets turned on, and I will respond to anything that I uh, see pop up that I can help you with. Cool? Let's go have a look. Let's have a look. And so here's my box. <laughs> oh, hello again to some of you. <laughs> and hello to the... Uh, Barbara's just woken up, so she didn't see the earlier one. Same with Karen. So here we go. Here's what I've got for November. Let's make sure. Now, I know some people like the embellishments and stuff first, but I like paper first because it's how my brain works. And a little behind the scenes bit. When I am making the kit, the paper is always chosen first. Always choose the papers first. Okay. So, autumn without losing color. An autumn rainbow. That's where I went with this kit. This one is exactly that. That's what I see here. It's a stripe, and to me, this is an autumn rainbow because it's actually mixed in some really springtime colors. If I look at just that bit, and take out that orangey brown. I've got like Easter color scheme, but then I've got this brown and this orange added in, which to me those are not the same. <laughs> and so yes, I feel like this is an autumn rainbow. So this is from the Pink Fresh collection called The Best Day. That one is called So Thankful, and the other side is a leaf, a uh, fern type leaf. Um, well, a mix of leaves really. But I definitely wanted a rainbow stripe to kind of set the tone. Now I'm aware that some of you are in parts of the world where you don't get an autumn and you don't know where you are or whatever the weather is like where you are. It might technically be autumn but you don't have cool, cool or cool weather or changing leaves. You could set this, you could start building your kit with a rainbow stripe that is the color scheme you want to use and then you're just going to pick other things that will coordinate. Yeah, okay. Make sure I can see all of you. Here we go. All right. Um, then, Prima's Hello Pink Autumn collection. This one's called Happy Fall, and it has pastel pumpkins, butterflies, and gold foil. Ooh, shiny. Um, yes, 
Now, Prima have started, well, I think they've done it for a while, but they do this thing where they give you the color swatches down here at the bottom. So if you want to pick ink colors or paint colors or solid colors, anything else to match, they, um, they give them to you at the bottom here on the branding strip, which can be kind of helpful. Anyway, so a pumpkin print if you're doing autumn things. But if you're not doing autumn things, this would then give you the option to use a floral, a butterfly, yeah? Um, something that's going to have motifs in the same color palette. Because look, I know they're very different styles, but the colors are the same. Yeah. Okay. Then this is also Hello Pink Autumn from Prima. And this one's called Grateful Hearts and has autumn leaves on a dusty pink, again with gold foil. Now, here's the thing. Also, pink grid on the back. Did I show you the back of the other one? Burlap. I probably won't use that. I might use a little scrap of it if I have it left over. Okay. Um, the yes. So there's something I love about this. Um, but something I don't love about it. So I love this. This is not my favorite kind of element on a page. So I'm going to mentally prepare you that I'm probably going to cover that bit up. Okay? <laughs> or you could cut it out. It's a little too detailed for the kind of cutting I like to do, so I'm just not imagining myself cutting it out. But I might. I mean, this is quite sweet. I could maybe cut it out as a title block. But I prefer elements like this to be a die cut rather than be something on top of the paper because I can't move this around, yeah? And I can't layer with it. I would much rather like to have this so that I could plunk it on top and have something tucked in. So if I wanted to tuck something underneath there, I'd have to like detail cut this with a cutting uh, with a knife. And no, that's not gonna happen because I like my fingers. I like having 10 of them. Um, so yeah. So I just want you to be prepared that I'm probably going to just cover that up. Cool. Um, so if you wanted to swap this out for something in your stash, have you got a leafy print that you like? Yeah? I did leafy prints in Go Now Go. Could do that. You could do the, if you've got leftovers from the October kit and you want to use the leafy print from um, Paige's collection, you could do that. Yeah. Bungalow Lane. Um, if you've got leafy prints from anywhere. Um, and if you're doing a springtime kit instead of an autumn, you just pick a leafy print that has, you know, normal colored springtime leaves. Don't, don't make that harder than it needs to be. It's not hard. Just leaves for the right season for you. No problem. Okay. Speaking of bungalow lane, here it is. So this one, that's a blue floral. This is number 19. Her papers have numbers rather than names. Um, so a blue background with little flowers, but kind of autumnal colors mixed in there. But see, same sort of thing. We've got this pale pink, we've got a pale blue mixed in with the orange and yellow. Autumn rainbow. Yeah? <laughs> this side is a geometric mustard and pale pink. I probably won't use this side. I'll probably just use the floral side. So you can swap in a small floral that matches what you've picked so far. Then, this one. It's a small world after all. Yeah, this is what I see here. I see it's a small world. Different color scheme, it's autumn small world. And I am here for the, the challenge of autumn small world because I've got first week of November, in theory, I shall be at Disneyland Paris. So I might specifically do a small autumn small world page. <laughs> I know that's niche and not something that's going to be useful for everyone. So I promise I will also show some other way to use this paper that's not about small world. But you gotta let me have my small world fun. Okay, the other side of this is super usable. It's um, it's a big chunky stripe and I love a big chunky stripe. Yes, and it's got a bit of texture to it and it's got a bit of fade. It's brighter up here, it's darker down here. Um, and this has got kind of a little, the white has um, a teeny 
tiny halftone dot. And the blue texture almost looks denim, but only if you kind of cross your eyes. I think because it's also a half tone, but it's just kind of turning into a fabric texture to my, to my eyes. Um, so I think I'm going to use probably half of it for the small world page, and I'll use um, a quarter of it in another way, and then I'll use some stripe. I might have to get two of this one because I like both sides a lot, but at, at the moment, I only have one. Cool. Okay, so if you're going to substitute something in for this, a big, bold stripe. Could be any color that you like to make it match with everything else. And then something geometric. Now, you could also make a pattern like this from scraps and shapes if you are up for something labor intensive. I know that I choose the pattern paper of those two options, but you know, up to you. Cool. Stars. Also bungaloing. This is not bungalow lane. Bungaloing? <laughs> bungalow lane. <laughs> That one was 13. The small world was 13. Uh, stars, it's number 10. And so these are stars that look kind of stitched. Um, but again, we've got the pink thrown in here with an otherwise, well, and a pale green with the orange and the yellow and the navy. So, and the cream. And tone on tone, dark blue at the back. So that's really useful and easy, you know, a really easy, versatile paper to be able to use. So if you're going to sub in here, you want a star print or another, if you don't do stars, the stars are not your thing. It could be hearts, it could be circles, it could be whatever. Um, but a small pattern that has the color scheme that you're setting. And then something that's just a nice um, texture in a contrasting color, because this is the first of all of these papers that's got a nice dark solid tone to it when we've got the dark and the stripe here. Sometimes you need that contrast when you're building a kit. You need light and dark to be able to build up your pieces. Okay. This one's number 11. And this is floral on a black or almost black navy. I can't quite tell actually. Background. Um, small floral background nice big mustard yellow b-side okay so if you're going to sub in here something that's small but colorful could be flowers could be leaves could be something completely different if you would rather have a different motif okay um but could be small flowers could be this colorful could be one color on a on a solid background up to you okay and i would put some sort of yellowy, mustardy yellow with this, or if you're completely changing the color scheme, pick a bright color that's in your color scheme and get a single color, a monochromatic color, um, monochromatic pattern in there. So that, see, these two are gonna be useful. They may not be patterns that grab your eye straight away, but you need them for things like mats and layers. Okay, okay. Cool, then some embellishment papers. This one is from Maggie Holmes' garden party, and it's a cut apart with old papers. I know you're gonna be like, but that with this, those are two completely different styles of illustration, Shamal. What are you playing at? But I promise I'll make it work. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. Um. So yeah, layers, texture. If you don't have this particular one, but you've got something else that you could, like you, it could all be one sheet of ledger and you just cut it into boxes. That would be fine. Um, but you need something that you can journal on. If you really don't like distressed look like this, don't like vintage look, then go with a nice clean one or a pack of three by four cards is clean. That would be fine too, okay? In fact, I wonder, do I have a pack here that matches? that kind. Da, 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 da. You could swap out something, you know, like a pack like this. I'm trying to think, is this Elle's or Ellie's or is this scrapbook.com? Oh, see, that looks very scrapbook.com. <laughs> and that looked, that looked more Ellie's studio, but I think that must be a scrapbook.com set. Um, I could be wrong. Anyway, if you're choosing from your stash, it doesn't really matter what brand it is, choose 
something that you like. Cool. Um, my intention is to use the A size here, but if you did need the B side, it's just a, a pastel texture kind of print. Now the cut apart. Back to Pink Fresh, The Best Day. Um, yeah, lots of different pieces that can work as titles, pieces that can work as layers. B side is really useful, but I kind of want to just go ahead and cut these out straight away and use them as die cuts. Um, so there you go. I might show up on the first day having already cut these out. I need to decide because I do like this. That is a pattern. In fact, I had a very similar pattern to that in one of my collections because I find that to be really useful. But yeah, this is like Tucky City. Yeah. Cool. And labels. Um, also a Maggie Holmes garden party, but with brighter color, but still has this mustard yellow in there that kind of pulls it all in with the autumn and still has this blue. Um, so even though this was a spring collection, I find it really useful. And I will be honest, when Maggie does these papers with all the little tiny tags and stuff, she's done them in a few different collections and I buy multiples as soon as I see them because I know I will cut them up and use them. They're so versatile. And you can just tuck, 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 tuck. I won't use this piece side, I don't think. It would be very cute for a Minnie Mouse page. It's little bows, black and white. But again, I'm buying it for the side and I'm just gonna cut those up. Cool? Last one. No, that's two. They're both cut apart. <laughs> I went big on cut aparts. Um, Orangina says, is this one a repeat? Did we have this already? This one? No. I tried to put it in one month and they didn't have stock. And then it came back in. And so I added it. I have used it lots, personally, but not in a kit. I don't think. If I did get it in a kit and I made that mistake, I do apologize. I'll have to go back and look now. But I remember trying to put it in and it not being there. So then when I found it and it had stock, it had stock, I was like, oh, it's going in. I hope I haven't done that twice. But you, you, you could very well be right. Um, she says I've used this this piece here that says dream. The more that you say it, I know because I have used it, and I'm wondering, did I use it in a kit now? Ah, okay, I gotta stop or I'll just go down a rabbit hole in my brain. Right, it's okay. If you have it left from, from a previous existence, you can use it again. <laughs> um, tags, nice big tags. This is paper 22 from Bungalow Lane and they're tags on both sides. Now, I will use some in their tag shapes and I will use some cut into smaller pieces. Yeah, okay. Um, I should probably find my whole bunch. That's a note to me, but if you want to get your whole punch out too, that's a note to you. <laughs> and the last big paper is number 23, borders, tiny tags, and then some three by fours. Yeah. B side to this, I really like. Tone on tone, blue, floral. So this one I'm not going to cut in advance, and I will probably, like... I might take this section right here and use that as a four by six because I can imagine that. I know this one is, the C packet motif is, is never my favorite. Um, I don't have anything against it, it just doesn't, because I don't plant things, I don't have, I, and you know I like random, so it's not that. It's not that I need to plant things and then grow with, with it, but I don't know. It's, I think it's all rooted in that, you know the expression bloom where you're planted? which you quite often see in seed packet illustrations, not that it says this. I clearly did not bloom where I was planted. I had to leave and move and then found my feet. So I think I have a block against the whole growing seed packet uh, type mix with, with humanity. <laughs> I can't buy into the metaphor. Okay, I maybe read way too much into that. Anyway. So... From this bottom section, I might end up using the back. So I'm not going to cut that one up in advance is what I meant. So if you wanted then to swap out these, this could be a pack of tags or it could be scraps that you've cut into kind of tag shapes. You might have a tag die and you could just go through scraps and find what matches the rest of the stuff you've pulled out. Yeah. And um, 
And then this one, a cut apart that has different pieces. So if you didn't have a cut apart with different pieces, you could mix and match from your stash so you could find some border strips, you could find some little die cut tags. Yeah, don't feel like it's gotta be on one piece of paper. You can mix and match with stuff that will work. Now, that's all the big paper I said because I've also got a small paper option and it is an option because it's a Halloween paper and I know not everybody does Halloween. So I, do a, I did a Halloween option in the October kit and a Halloween option in the November kit because, um, you know, if you were, if you only had current photos to do, you might not have your Halloween pictures in October because it's the last day. So, okay, I will say I was terrified when I got this because the cover is offset. It's just been punched wrong, but the papers are fine. Phew! So this is Halloween Harvest in a six by six. So I've had lots of requests to put a six by six in the kit and I've never done it. Mostly because it takes up a big chunk of the budget. But by making it an option, then I put that outside my kit budget. <laughs> like the, when I build the, the standard kit, and um, I have like a price point in mind for each section, but then I also can sometimes put in some optional things. So this is the optional thing. So I have a little flip through of this for you. They are double-sided with different patterns. There are a bunch of them that are more autumn than specifically Halloween, but you do have some that are Halloween as well. Um, some plaids in here. Some nice greens. And we get into purple, that one has skulls. But they, see, the ones we've had so far, let's, let's double check as I go through. But, so this one is, is Halloween, it's Jack Lanterns, but the other side is not. It's not specifically Halloween. This one has skulls, but the other side is a plaid. Spider webs, and the other side is leaves. Ghosts is a houndstooth, yeah? And then we start over. Okay, so the only ones that are specifically Halloween, the B sides are not specifically Halloween. Yeah? In case that helps you decide if you want that. So that was the kind of optional paper add-on for this month. Now I did go ahead and make that match with this month's confetti. So I went with the Halloween Harvest gems. Um, but you could swap in any gems or enamel dots that match the papers that you've chosen. When I had them in the kit, I kept using them for ages and not sure if I ever got to the end of them. I know I've got a few partial sheets of these. So yeah, really nice. They are all one size. So there's that trade-off, but you get a lot in there and I love the color and the sparkle of them. But you can swap out whatever confetti element you want if you don't have those. Lettering. Puffy, but not too puffy. Layers, uh, letters, not layers, letters, from Pink Fresh, The Best Day, and in blue. Yes, both sides, upper and lower, no numbers. Okay, just so you're aware, no numbers. Uppercase lowercase is that literally one comma or apostrophe how random okay so i don't think that counts as punctuation oh no there's two there's two there's one more there there's not like a full stop and there's not an exclamation or a question mark just so you keep in mind hello samara who's in california and never live welcome yeah no ampersand either you're right orangina no ampersands Okay, die cut pack, also from Pink Fresh, The Best Day. Let's open her up. I'm very much looking forward to lots of layers in this kit. Um, so all those cut aparts plus a die cut pack instead of stickers this month. I think there, there, I think, there are definitely sticker elements in this um, collection too, so if you prefer stickers to this die cut pack, you could do that. You've got a bicycle. I know those are always, you know, you love or hate a bicycle die cut, but I don't mind them. Glasses, here for that. Watering can, now see, watering can, not. Books, yay, coffee, teacup, coffee cup, leaves. 
Um, so the, love you most. There's no place I'd rather be. Happy. It's always tea time. Hello, friend. Our family. Hey there, love. An envelope with leaves coming out of it. A little blue rose. Will work really well with the Maggie elements too. Nice. Uh, enjoying every minute. Currently reading. Oh, this one's super tiny. Making memories we won't forget. In purple. The first day. This is special. Blessings. Little moments. Camera. Happy fall. So I could just put something here because we don't say fall here. So if you also live in a place where it says autumn, it's, it's separated enough that you could just cover it up. Uh, family time is the best time. 75 cent ticket. Um, that one has little flowers and says XOXO. That's a little heart with a circle. So you get both pieces. Autumn Harvest Market Family Pass. So that's like a specifically autumn ticket. <laughs> a little floral tag there. Another floral tag here. So happy yellow rose piece, yellow and blue, another teacup, a uh, bushel of flowers there, a blue blossom set with mustard colored leaves, bigger tag here. That one says love ya with a little floral. We've got both a frame and a motif here. I'll go ahead and take them apart so you can see. So you've got a little leafy in stacks type frame. Home sweet home. Thankful. My favorite place to be. American spelling there. And the best day. Okay, so that's the die cut pack. You could swap to any other die cut pack that matches what you picked out. You could mix and match die cuts from a range of collections. You could pick some stickers. You just need, you know, things that you can sprinkle about. You need some motifs so you can stick on stuff. Yeah, don't overthink that. Um, so that's what, what we got there. Um, I won't put those back in just yet. I'll just pop them on top of the packet. There we go. Then, ink and tool for this month. So this month's um, stash building items. Our oxide color is Stormy Sky and then a cloud stencil. Now my cloud stencil is from Heffy Doodle, but there are lots of different cloud stencils that you can find from different brands. You don't need it to be this specific one, but you can use this specific one if you like, yeah? So I'm gonna show you this um, ink and this stencil in case you've never seen them before so that you can see um, the, kind of, the kind of look you can get. So Stormy Sky is a blue-gray type color. Elaine says I should put uh, I should put the die cuts in a mug. You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, so if I bring out I got a card blank here. Yeah, I got a card front. Actually, instead of doing that on white card stuff, why don't I put a map on the desk? Samara says, is Halloween a thing in the UK? Well, yes, but it is different than it is in America. Um, it has grown in its festivities in the time that I have lived in this country, which I've now lived in this country longer than I ever lived in America. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's not as big a deal over here as in the States. Um, so for example, here, this is a good example for Americans. So on the 1st of October, I get out my <laughs> October, my Halloween capsule wardrobe. Yes. And it has oranges and pumpkins and uh, Mickey pumpkins and uh, Haunted Mansion references. And Wonder Boy and I wear Halloween clothes for the entirety of October. In America, this would be completely normal and not strange. 
I can't go anywhere without people commenting on how I'm making an early start on Halloween, even right now when we're like, you know, almost a week to go. Um, yeah. And um, Elaine points out the other thing that's a very big difference is that Halloween is almost entirely seen as like a spooky kind of dress up thing here in the UK. And if you dress as something that's not particularly spooky as your Halloween costume, people kind of give you a bit of a raised eyebrow because you're trying to figure it out. So classic me misinterpreting the situation was when Wonder Boy was a tiny baby, we went to a Halloween party that was for babies. <laughs> and there were like hundreds of babies there. And every single baby in the room was dressed as either a witch or a pumpkin except for mine, and none of the adults were dressed up. Well, Wonder Boy and I, as a tiny baby, one, tiny Wonder Boy, and me as a grown-up, there we go. I said it in the wrong order and it sounded weird in my head. Uh, we dressed as members of the Team Zisu um, diving team from, you know, the Life Aquatic, Wes Anderson film. Not spooky. Blue shirts, red hats. <laughs> and when we walked in, they looked at me and they said, well, where's your, co where's his costume? I'm like, he's wearing his costume. So am I. Where's your costume, grown-ups? Come on. And so there you go. That's the difference between British Halloween and American Halloween. Because that costume would have worked perfectly well in America. <laughs> da -da -da! This is what this stencil does. Yes, and here's this color. So, oh, Sarah's off to Comic Con tomorrow. Enjoy, enjoy. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's what this looks like now. Um, I have used it without it being this um size. I think it was back in November. Is it no? That's what we're on right now, Shamel. It was the March challenge. So it would have been March or April's kit. Um, so I did um, a Little Mermaid page that used this. And I used it on a 12 by 12 so it wasn't fitting inside like this card blankets. Yeah. But you will need some sort of way to fade your ink with this. So you need a booper or a brush or a spongy type thing. <laughs> and Lance says, this is the perfect color for the skies that we have this time of year. Yeah, we have lots of these color skies in the autumn. Lots of gray blues. Yeah, and you can then use this same sort of stencil with different colors on every layer um, and all sorts of things like that. Okay, so a cloud stencil and a sky kind of color for your ink. So I'm using Stormy Sky in Distress Oxide. If you don't have this stencil or you don't have a cloud stencil and you really want to give it a try, you could cut this sort of shape patiently with scissors or use a cutting machine or you might even have, you know, fancy decorative edge scissors that did a cloud or a border punch or something like that. Think creatively, you might be able to make something and give it a go before you buy one if you're kind of unsure. But I do love this. Karen says the stencil's out of stock. Yeah, but there are other brands of cloud stencil. Um, so you can, if you search for cloud stencil, you will find all different brands that they does not need to ex be this exact one. But you do want something where you've got cloud edges as opposed to a stencil that has little cloud speech bubble type things. Cool? Ah, uh, yay. Karen said she did get a different one instead. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So there we go. Um, that is everything for November's kit. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about in preparation from November. Now, in the description box, I have linked an on Instagram, the account are you Kristen, like literally the letter R U and the name Kristen. Okay, if you want to click over to her account, she runs um, a challenge on Thursdays 
to post a selfie and three quick little updates about yourself or three things about yourself as a as a way especially with scrapbookers but everyone's invited and as a way of kind of keeping some sort of a, a, a personal documentation that makes it you know it breaks it down into something really nice and easy and I would love to just talk to you on the face cam now but the face cam just ran out of power so I got to talk to you at the desk and um, so yeah, so if you have a look, she's been writing these little essays and posting them on Instagram lately so that you can kind of have a read of, of the thought that she's putting behind why she does this, why she encourages others to do this, all that sort of good stuff. And you know that getting yourself into the pictures is a big deal for me. And November, I really want to make it like... I, there will be other photos. There there will certainly be photos of the small person as well. But I really want to add in some content about making sure that you do get in your pictures and helping you with any sort of worries that you have about getting in your pictures. So, um, yeah. I would love for you to tell me in the comments, tell me anywhere you want to tell me, what are the, the barriers for you on getting pictures of yourself so that I can make sure that I include content that complements Kristen's stuff. Um, and I would love for you to try joining in on her Thursday 3 hashtag, anything like that, and then we can scrapbook those photos. Um, but, I, you know, earlier in the year I did a little series of tiny short videos about um, posing, parent and child posing, so how WB and I get pictures of us together. And if you want me to do some um, selfie type videos like that, I'm totally game for that. If you um, if you want to, Elaine says, can you put a link? Yeah, she, the link is in the description box right now. It's already there. So if you go, you'll have to go down a few bits in the description box to this video, but it is there. Okay. Um, so let me know what sort of thing um, that you would. If you, if you want some, some help on getting pictures like that, or if you're already, you're like, nope, I need no help, I'm an expert at this, and I'm gonna scrap selfies all month, and I'm here to applaud you, um, yeah, but I would, yeah, I would, if I can help you, if there's something that I can, any barrier I can help you break down with that, I would love to, so just let me know. All right, any questions from my live crowd about this kit? So this is the November kit, it's linked in the description box, um, and I will start using it um, from the first live in November, which would be Monday, the first of November, because the Monday is, Sunday is Halloween. Monday is the first, so I'll be using it Monday afternoon. Um, and yeah, if you're new to all this, I scrapbook live twice a week, Mondays at 1:30 and Fridays at 1:30 uh, in the afternoon, and Fridays at 9:30 in the morning. And both of those are UK time. Please keep in mind that our clocks don't always change the same time as everywhere else in the world. Um, that uh, you, it may be off for a week or two depending on clocks changing. Uh, Orangina says, what's the schedule next week? The schedule next week, um, for the last week of October, because uh, it's a school holiday here, so there'll still be videos at the normal time on Monday and Friday, but they're going to be edited videos rather than live videos. And then there's gonna be at least one surprise live with my special guest host, who's rather small. Um, somewhere in the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or it won't be Tuesday, either Wednesday or Thursday, <laughs> um, because he is dying to do a live with the face cam and he's not done a live since we had this set up, so he's really excited to to be on camera, <laughs> as you can imagine. Ham of a child. Right, is that is that it? Oh, Elaine says she's never in the pictures because no one else takes them. Okay, no one else takes mine either. I gotta do it myself, but I'm happy to walk you through doing it yourself. You can do it, you can do it. Between timers or remotes or holding the camera in front of your face, you can do it, okay? Radio. I will see you um, very soon, and I will put up the schedule for November so that you can get um, reminders um, from the very first one. Uh, yeah, so I'll put those up probably next week so that you can set the reminders for the upcoming streams. 
enjoy making this from your stash or from matching supplies. Either way, you're very welcome. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a creative month ahead. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>